Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching a video about Windows Server Update Services, or what's simply known as WSUS. In this video, I'll introduce you to exactly what WSUS is, I'll show you how to install it and configure it, we'll take a look at computer groups, which is something that allows us to have a little bit more control over which computers get which updates. I'll show you how to configure your clients to use WSUS servers, and then I'll show you how to approve updates in the WSUS Administration Council. First of all, what exactly is WSUS? Well, on the screen here, I have a representation of what we used to have before WSUS. We would have large quantities of client computers who would each independently have to do a Windows update and communicate with Microsoft's update server independently. So for example, I have one client here who would have to go across our network, through the router, out to the internet, and over to Microsoft's update server just to do a query to see if there were any updates available. If there are updates available, well then the update server needs to go ahead and not only communicate that, but download those updates back to the individual machine. And I'll tell you what, just doing that once can use up quite a bit of bandwidth. Imagine having to do that with each and every client out there. Well, that would be kind of crazy. WSUS gives us the ability to now have all of our clients communicate with a WSUS server for their updates. See what happens is the WSUS server will go ahead and go out onto the internet, communicate with Microsoft's update server, and then Microsoft's update server will send those updates just to the WSUS server. Everybody else on the network will now communicate directly with the WSUS server and no longer have to tie up that internet bandwidth. Now, as far as why to use WSUS, well, one of the reasons I was just explaining. It helps save internet bandwidth, and it also makes more efficient use of Microsoft's update servers. Imagine how bogged down their servers get when you have not just hundreds of thousands of different organizations trying to communicate with them for updates, but now take each one of those organizations and multiply by the number of clients they have. It's just outrageous. So it's really a win-win. It saves your internet bandwidth and also saves Microsoft's server capacity. Now the second benefit to why we use WSUS is WSUS gives administrators control over what updates are sent to the clients. And they do this by allowing administrators to test and approve the updates before the clients are allowed to have them. And we'll take a look at this when we look at the interface. We'll see how updates are brought to the WSUS server, but they just sit there. They just sit there idle, waiting to be sent out until an administrator goes in and says, okay, yes, I have tested and approved this update. Clients can now have them. Now let's go take a look at exactly how to install and configure our WSUS server. For this lesson, we're going to go ahead and connect with our favorite member server, New York Member 1. Typically, WSUS would not be installed on a domain controller unless you were in a small enough environment that you only had the single server, or maybe it's the only server you have left available. So in this case, we're going to use a member server, so let's connect to New York Member 1 now. All right, now that we're connected to New York member one, the first thing I want to go over with you are the installation requirements for WSUS. And the way I'd like to show these to you is by going to Internet Explorer. And then I have a favorite that's been saved here. Let me show you for the WSUS installation requirements. You may want to take a moment to pause the video and jot down the URL, which is listed right up here, HTTP technet.microsoft.com slash en-us slash library slash cc7084484.aspx. 708484aspx The reason you may want to look at this URL is not only does it give us the installation requirements, but if you look over on the left-hand side here, there's actually seven different steps that this article reviews 
ranging from the installation requirements all the way through approving and deploying your updates. So if you ever need uh, a good reference guide to, to go back to, this is one I would recommend. Anyway, if we come over here to review the installation requirements, you just scroll down a little bit here. We want to go down, this is for server 2003, we want to go down to the part where it says right here, server requirements for installing on Windows Server 2008. And you'll see here that it says IIS 7 must be installed. So we need the IIS role to be installed. And then more specifically, it talks about how the following components must be enabled. So in just a minute here, we're going to go ahead and install the IIS role and we'll make sure to hit each one of these components. Also, you'll see here that it says you need the Microsoft Report Viewer Redistributable 2005. And to download it, there's a link here. Now, this particular feature is not a requirement. I know it's listed as a requirement, but it's only a requirement if you're going to be doing reporting. And when we install WSUS, I'll show you exactly where it points that out. And then here is where it says you need SQL Server Service Pack 1, but again, only if you're using a SQL database. So anyway, the point here is, is that you may need all of this, but the only actual requirement is that we install the IIS with the following features. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and click on Start. Go to our Server Manager. Click on Roles and then we will add a role. Once we're in the add roles wizard, we'll go ahead and click on web server or IIS. And you'll see here that right away it says that other required features must also be installed. So let's add those required features and click next. Here's an intro to what web services are. We'll click next. Now you'll notice that there are a whole lot of services to choose from here. So if we were to go back to our list down here on Internet Explorer, you'll see here that it wants you to select Windows Authentication. So let's go down here to Windows Authentication and check the box. And it says we must have ASP.NET. So we'll scroll up here and select ASP.NET. Now watch what happens when I click this one. Again, additional services and features are required, so let's go ahead and add those. And you'll see a lot of checkboxes have now been selected. We come back here, it says we need the 6.0 management compatibility. So we scroll down here, and here's our IIS 6 management compatibility. And you'll notice it includes all the different IIS compatibilities, including the MetaBase compatibility, which was the last item on our list. So what that means is, let me go ahead and close this window. We are all set to install this role. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. Here's a review of everything that's going to be installed. And I'll click Install. Now I will tell you while this is installing, the reason why it requires the IIS role and all the associated services is because WSUS is all web-based. It's all managed through the internet browser. So in order to be managed through an internet browser, you must have the web services available to set this up pretty much like a web server. So, oh, and by the way, the IIS6 compatibility tools were required because WSUS 3.0, boy, there's an awful lot of letters and numbers going on out here, Feel free to play this again if you if you haven't kept up with all the different letters and numbers. But anyway, WSUS 3.0 was designed back before Windows Server 2008. It was actually designed back with Windows Server 2003, which had IIS 6, and so we need to have that backward compatibility available. Okay, this is just about done installing. And there we go. It has now completed. Installation has succeeded. I'm going to click close. And we now have the web services that are required. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. We now need to download WSUS to be installed. It's a real easy link to remember where to download WSUS. Let me click on Internet Explorer. 
I'm going to put in www.microsoft.com forward slash WSUS. Easy enough to remember. This will now take you to the location where you can, over here on the left hand side, download WSUS 3.0. So I'm going to click that link. Then you click on the link here where it says download files below. And then you'll see we have, well here's the end user license agreement, but right here we have the two different setups. The one for the 64-bit operating system and the x86 which is for 32-bit operating systems. So you need to determine which one you are running. Now the one I'm on is a 32-bit version of Windows Server 2008. The way you can recognize this on your own system is by clicking Start and then right clicking on the word computer and selecting properties. And then right here you'll see system type 32-bit operating system or in your case you may see 64-bit operating system. Depending on which one you're running you want to download the appropriate one. So in my case I'm going to download the x86 version. And I'm going to go ahead and save it and I'm going to click browse folders and put it right on my desktop just so it'll be nice and easy to, to locate. Now, depending on your bandwidth and, <laughs> and the speed of Microsoft's servers at this very moment, uh, it will vary how fast you, this will download. As you can see, I have almost a minute left. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pause the video. If you're downloading, please do the same, and then go ahead and resume when the download is complete. Okay, the download is now complete, so I'll go ahead and close this window and close the Internet Explorer window. And you'll see here on my desktop, I now have the WSUS setup executable. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that executable and tell it I want to go ahead and run it. It extracts the files and takes us into the wizard. I'll click Next. And you have a choice between a full server installation or simply the administration council. If you wanted to be able to manage your WSUS server from a remote computer, one of the ways you could do it is by installing the administration council only. But in this case, we want the full installation. I'll click next. And what it was doing there while it said it was preparing was it was verifying that you have met the minimum requirements. If you're following along and you got an error at this point, read the error, see what you're missing, and then go ahead and add those missing components. Now I need to go ahead and agree to the license agreement. Click Next. Now here is where you get that screen I was telling you about where it says there is a required component and it's the Microsoft Report Viewer redistributable. Well, this is only required if you're going to do reporting, which we're not going to get into right now. And that's why I didn't worry about it. If you want to play around with reporting, go ahead and download this from the link that was in that TechNet article. And then you should be able to go ahead and do reporting just fine. Also, you'll see here that it gives you the ability to move forward. And it says, if you want to do this, install these components after installing Windows server update services. So I'll go ahead and click on next. Now I need to select an update source. I need to determine where it is that I want to store the updates. And you'll see here it says if you have a drive formatted with NTFS and at least six gig of free disk space, you can use it to store updates. Now if you decide that you do not have a location, which in this case our C drive has plenty of available space, I'm just going to put it in a folder called WSUS. The default is just fine. Typically, you may want to actually have a separate volume or a separate partition or possibly even a separate drive to store these updates. But that's a decision that you would need to make based upon your scenario. If you were to uncheck this box saying, I don't want to store updates locally because I don't have enough space or I don't want to tie up the space, then what's going to happen is the updates are going to still be stored out on Microsoft's update servers, which is perfectly acceptable. But in this case, you're not saving a whole lot of bandwidth because your clients are still going to be updating from those servers, but you will, you will now have control over the updates. You still get to approve the updates through the WSUS utility. Now, an example where this 
would be real typical might be not just because you don't have enough disk space, but one other real typical scenario would be if you have a remote office, or maybe you have a lot of remote offices, and the clients have to go across a slow WAN link to get to your WSUS server, well, it may not make sense to use your own private slow WAN link to download these updates when maybe those individual offices have a separate connection out to the internet and maybe it's a, a higher speed connection to the internet where they can get it directly from Microsoft. That's a typical scenario where you may choose to not store locally. But in this case, we're going to store them locally. Go ahead and click on next. Now we have the choice of what we want to do with regards to a database to keep track of all this. Now you'll see that by default you don't have to have any specific database installed on your computer. You could choose to install a Windows internal database right here again in the WSUS folder. Or if you have, let's say, an existing SQL database, and again this is where you would need at least SQL Server 2005 Service Pack 1, you could use an existing database and point to that location. I do not have a database here, but that's okay because you can use the one that it'll create for you right on this computer. I'll check that button and click next. Now it wants to know about the website. Remember, this is all administrated through a web browser, and so it's, we have to set up a web page to access it. And the default choice is to use the existing default website. You'll notice this is recommended. And the reason why is because typically, your WSUS server is not also going to be a web server. So since it's not providing any other web services, you should have that default website available. If you don't have the default website available, if you are using this server as a web server for other purposes, then you could go ahead and create a Windows Server Update Services website separate from the default. So we're going to go ahead and use the default in this case. And click on Next. And there's a review screen. We're ready to install. I'm going to click Next. And it's going to go through and it is going to install WSUS. Now, this installation, you'll see right up here, it says this may take several minutes. And depending on the speed of your computer, it, it just may take several minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And I'll be right back with you as soon as it's done. OK, now the wizard has completed. So let's go ahead and click Finish. And you will see here that the first thing it does when you finish is it takes you into the Windows Server Update Services Configuration Wizard. Now, let me move this box up just a little bit here so we can see everything. And this is a, a neat little wizard that helps you to set up your WSUS server. You'll notice down here it says to run this wizard again, launch WSUS and then go to options. So if you don't want to have to configure everything right now, you don't have to, you can cancel out of the wizard and come back later. But let's go ahead and do it. First step here says before you begin, you need to make sure, first of all, that your clients can connect to this server. So it's talking about, is your firewall configured to allow clients to get to this server? And one of the reasons that this is very important to pay attention to is because in many cases, your WSUS server, because it is something that is designed to touch and be touched by the outside world, will sit out in a DMZ or a screen subnet or perimeter network it's sometimes referred to, where it's not actually on your internal network, but it's not out in the outside world. It's in a protected network that has a firewall between it and your internal network. So you want to make sure that that firewall is set up to allow clients to get to the server. The second thing is, can this computer get to the upstream server? Now, that's a term that confuses many people. Upstream server just means, where am I getting the updates from? Now, here in parentheses, it says, such as Microsoft Update. That's the typical upstream server, meaning, can this server connect with Microsoft's update servers to get the updates? But you could have a scenario where this server was actually getting its updates from another WSUS server. In a very large environment, you might actually have a hierarchy of WSUS servers because one might not be enough to satisfy your entire organization's needs. So you need to make sure that you can connect with the upstream server. 
And then do you have the credentials for the proxy server if needed? Now the if needed is the important part. Where I'm sitting, I don't have a proxy server. If you do have a proxy server to get to the internet or to get between you and the upstream WSUS server, then you need to make sure you have the appropriate credentials for that proxy server so you can make that connection. So pretty much what this is all about is making sure that all of your network is set up to handle the WSUS configuration. All right, let's go ahead and click on next. Now it's asking if we want to join the Microsoft Update Improvement Program. Basically, this is a program where Microsoft collects data from your WSUS server so that it can, or so they can make the next version a better product. Now you can choose whether you feel that this is something that you should participate in or not, but in this case, I'm going to uncheck the box and say, I do not want to join this program. And it's not that I'm against the program. It's because I am setting this up for the purposes of showing it to you. This is not a production WSUS server. So if you're not using this in production, if you're following along just for the sake of learning, I recommend you uncheck the box as well, because otherwise you're sending false statistics over to Microsoft. All right, let's go ahead and click on next. Now we need to choose an upstream server, and the default is to synchronize from Microsoft Update. If you do have a hierarchy of WSUS servers, and this is one of the child servers, then you would click to synchronize from another Windows Server Update Services server, and you would put the name of that server in right here. You'll notice you're connecting via port 80, because it's all done via HTTP, it's all done through web services. But in this case, we are not. We are going to go ahead and synchronize from Microsoft Update. Go ahead and click on Next. Now we need to specify if there's a proxy server, and as I mentioned before, there is no proxy server here. If there was, I would check the box, put in the name, enter credentials if necessary, etc., etc. Clear those boxes and click Next. Now, it says to configure WSUS on the following screens, we need to apply your upstream server and proxy server settings and synchronize information about available updates. So. Let's go ahead and click to start connecting. You'll notice here it says this process might take several minutes or longer depending on your connection speed. Let's go ahead and pause the video because depending on your connection speed and my connection speed, this might take a little while. Okay, it has completed its synchronization and connecting. Uh, you can tell by the way that it is complete because the bar is no longer scrolling, it is now a complete bar. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. It then takes us into choosing what languages we want these updates in. If you are working in a global organization, then you may want to go ahead and download updates in all languages. If you are in an organization where there's a single language or maybe only a few languages or only a few areas of the world that you exist in, well, then you can go ahead and select those particular languages. The default is English. I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked and go ahead and click Next. Now we get to choose what products we want updates on. And you'll notice that we have support for a lot of products now. Now the default is that all Windows products are checked, which means all operating systems are checked. Matter of fact, you'll notice that even Windows 7, which is still in beta, has been checked. And if I scroll up here, you'll notice that Office has also been selected. And those are the only two items that are there by default. And what I want to do is right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear Office because I don't want to worry about Office products right now. I want to work exclusively with the Windows operating systems and then go ahead and click Next. Before I do, I will tell you that the products that you want to choose from should relate with the products that you are using in your environment. I want to caution you against checking the all products box or even the all Microsoft box because there's a lot of stuff here and that's a lot of overhead that may be just completely wasted if you're not using these products. So in this case we're going to leave it at the operating system and go ahead and click next. 
Now it wants to know what classifications of updates you're looking for. The default is critical updates, definition updates to the WSS server, and security updates. If you want to include any of the rest of this, all you have to do is check the box. Now I don't want to check any additional boxes because all I'm really worried about right now are the critical updates and security updates. I'm not even real concerned with the definition updates. So matter of fact, let's go ahead and clear that box. And very often, it, it's not unusual to just go ahead and take the defaults when installing your WSUS server because it has been designed for the typical environment. So let's go ahead and click Next. Now we get to choose when the WSUS server is going to synchronize with the Microsoft Update server. You can choose to synchronize automatically at which point you can pick what time of day you want your synchronization to take place. I don't know about 422 in the afternoon because that's usually a time when things may still be busy in the office. Uh, it might be more appropriate to do 422 AM and you'll notice that there's a random offset for up to 30 minutes from that time anyway so that it's not necessarily the exact same time every day but basically you pick what time of day you want your synchronizations to take place you can also say how many synchronizations you want to have per day if you really want to be out there checking all the time or you could choose to synchronize manually if you are going to have an administrator who is going to be responsible for the WSUS server and this is something that that administrator looks at every day then manual is just fine now in this case I am going to go ahead and set it up as manual because once we're done going through this I don't necessarily need this WSUS server to continue every single day so I'm going to say manually click on next and then we can choose to launch the administration console when we're done or not if we don't want to go into it but in this case we do and then we can also choose to begin the initial synchronization or not if now is not a good time but in this case it is a good time so I'm going to begin that synchronization. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And you'll see here that it says the next steps is you might want to read some articles on how to work with these different components of WSUS. Matter of fact, specifically 2, 3, and 4, we're going to look at here. We're going to talk about computer groups. I'm going to show you the group policy where you assign computers to groups. And then we're going to look at some auto approval rules so that you don't have to manually approve every single update. So let's go ahead and click on finish. And now it'll take just a moment here and the WSUS administration tool opens up. And you will notice here that if I click on New York member one, it's taking just a moment for it to refresh the screen. There we go. Uh, I'll go ahead and expand this. I'll show you these are some of the things that we're going to look at. Uh, but I want you to look in here. Now this reads kind of funny because of the resolution that I'm using. So what I'm going to do to make this a little easier is I'm going to close this actions box. So if I go up to view and go to customize, I'm going to clear the action pane. And then you see it's a lot easier to look at this detailed information. Right now it tells me there are nine security, oh, 10 security updates waiting to be approved five critical updates waiting to be approved. You'll notice that certain things still need a little bit of attention, but more specifically down here, let me scroll down a little bit, right here it's showing you the status as it's currently synchronizing and it's 11% done. So this, again, depending on how many updates are out there and depending on your internet bandwidth can take quite some time. Matter of fact, in many cases, it'll take over an hour. So again, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I will come back and resume the video once synchronization has completed. Okay, so the synchronization is complete and we know this because the status is now sitting idle. We could choose to synchronize now if we wanted to synchronize again and that's just something I want you to know in case you wanted to do a manual synchronization. But for right now, the initial synchronization is complete. I'll go ahead and scroll back up here. 
you'll notice there's a lot of updates waiting to be approved. Now what I want to show you is up here over on the left you see where it says computers. I'm going to expand that and you'll see that what we have here is all computers and basically that's the default. The default is hey you know what any and all computers that connect to this WSUS server or look to this WSUS server for updates are going to get the updates. But if you want to take it a step further and you have an interest in dividing different updates over to different computers, what you can do is right click on all computers and select add computer group. So in this case maybe I'll add a group for the New York computers and then I can add a computer group for the Chicago users. And you'll see if I expand this here you'll see I have the Chicago and the New York computer groups. There's also this other group here called unassigned computers and that would be any computers that don't end up getting assigned to one of those two groups. Now here's the important part. You need to determine if you're going to use computer groups you need to determine whether you're going to use what's called server side targeting or client side targeting and I will tell you the answer to that question. Pretty much in any environment that you're going to be using computer groups you're also going to be using client side targeting and the reason why is because server side targeting means that we basically take any computers that we find in the unassigned computers and manually move them over to the computer group we want them to be in. That's just way too much work. Meaning if you're in a large enough environment that there is a need to have these computer groups then you're in a large enough environment you don't want to be manually moving computers from one group to another. So what you want to do is you want to use client side targeting and the way you do this there's kind of a two step process here. The first step is to click on options and then down here where it says computers you can specify how to assign computers to groups. Click on computers and then here is the choice of using the update server that's server side targeting or we can check this button which is where we use group policy or registry settings on the computers and we're not going to manually go to each computer and do a registry setting either that would be just as time consuming as doing server side targeting. What we're going to use is group policy and that's the second part to this two step process. So let me go ahead and this is this button's checked here. I'm going to click OK. And now the second step here is we would have to go over to a domain controller and look at our group policy to go ahead and assign clients to specific computer groups. So what I want to do now is go ahead and go over to a domain controller and not only show you how to do the client side targeting feature through group policy but also how to have our clients look to this WSUS server through group policy. So let me go ahead and minimize my New York member one server and let's go connect to New York DC one our domain controller. On New York DC one we're going to click on start administrative tools and then go to group policy management. Now again with group policies there is a whole strategy to how you roll out those group policies. What I want to show you now is not so much that strategy as much as where the settings are that you would put into place. So we're going to take the default domain policy right click and select edit. That's just to pick any old policy to show you where these things exist. Under the computer configuration container we're going to expand policies and then administrative templates and then Windows components and then if you scroll way down here and let's move this over so we can see it scroll down a little more you'll see here's Windows Update. If I click on Windows Update you will see that I have some settings here and you know what these are kinda hard to read because the explanations are over here so we're gonna go from our extended view to our standard view makes it easier to see the complete setting. The first setting I want to show you is the enable client side targeting setting. If I double click on that you will see here 
that for this particular group policy, I could enable client-side targeting, and then I could type in the name of the group that I want the computers that this group policy affects to go into. So in this case, as a for instance, I've enabled it. I put in New York because that's one of our computer groups, and that's the group we're going to target. So any computers that this particular group policy affects would all be put into the New York computer group. Click OK, and then that's set, and as computers reboot, they would become a part of that computer group. Now, the other thing I want to show you here is how to go ahead and have our clients use the WSUS server for their updates. And that's this setting right here that says specify intranet Microsoft update service location. So let's double click on that one. And you'll see here what we want to do is enable it. And then after you enable it, you have to actually set what update service and statistics server we want to use. And it'll always be the same one. And the way you put it in is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then the name of the server which in this case is NYMEM12K8. Okay, and then we want that exact same entry to also go down here in the intranet statistics server as well. When I do this and click OK, now I've specified that we're using a WSUS server. The next thing that we have to do is go to the setting right above it that says configure automatic updates. See, this all by itself just means that Clients are going to use the WSUS server, but we may still be set on manual where users would actually have to go to Windows Update on the Start menu to get there. So under Configure Automatic Updates, we go ahead and double click, Enable Automatic Updates, and then we need to decide what level of updating we want. Now we can select to notify for download and install, meaning just tell the clients when their stuff ready and then they can choose to download and install it at their convenience. Not very typical, but you might come across a scenario where you want your individual clients to have complete control over updating their own machine. Maybe you have users who are somewhat computer savvy. Maybe they are doing specific duties that they need to have that level of control but you still want them to all go through your WSUS server. That would be number two. Number three would be very similar, which would be auto download, but then notify for install. That means that once the updates are approved and ready to go out, they get downloaded, but the user gets prompted to install. But the most common setting that you would use would be auto download and schedule the install. This is the one where you say, look, when I, the administrator, have approved an update on the WSUS server, I don't want the users to have to do anything because in most cases, they won't do it. So you want to go ahead and schedule it for either a particular day of the week. Okay, Maybe you only want to do it on the weekends, so maybe Saturday or Sunday. Or you could say, no, how about every day? And the default time is 3 a.m. So we're saying every day at 3 a.m., I want these computers to automatically download any updates that are available and install them and click OK. Now that's pretty much it when it comes to configuring the clients to use the WSUS server. But there are a few more, I mean you'll notice there's quite a list here of settings, and there's a few more I'd like to talk to you about because they're fairly common in many different environments. They're all really having to do with the restart that's involved with updating. Right here we have no auto restart with logged on users. Now let me go into that one and I'm going to click on the explain tab and you'll see here that this pretty much makes it that if a user is logged on, so it may be 3 in the morning but if the user is there and logged on, it's not going to do that reboot because the user might be in the middle of something and you don't want to kill that. Now this setting is good and bad all at the same time. The reason that it's good and bad is, it, you know, it's kind of a good thing to make sure that users don't get interrupted with what they're doing. Now, it doesn't really matter if somebody's there at 3 in the morning because you'll notice that if it's disabled or not configured, it'll actually notify the user that a reboot's going to happen in five minutes. So that way the user could have five minutes to turn things off. The big problem is what happens when the user's not there. What happens when the user's in the middle of a project 
leaves the computer logged in so as to keep that project running and goes home at night. Well, if we don't have this setting enabled, the system's going to automatically reboot after installing the updates and then their work may be lost. I think we've all probably experienced a situation where that has happened. Now, that's why this setting is good, is because, all right, if a user left their system logged in, we will not automatically reboot. The reason it's bad is because you might have some users who never log off. And if they don't ever log off, well, then they're never going to get these automatic updates. Now, yes, they'll be prompted next morning when they come in, but they may ignore that prompting as well. So that's kind of the, the good and the bad of a setting like this. Now, the next setting, and I'm going to click this next setting button. Let me, let me show you what it does. I'm going to hit cancel, and then I'll show you. Right now, we're on the no auto restart. The next setting down would be reprompt. So I'm going to double click, and then next setting. See, it goes to reprompt. So I'm going to go through a few settings in a row here. Again, on the explain tab. This pretty much has to do with if somebody were to have postponed the reboot, how long do we want to wait before we prompt them again to say, okay, you still need a reboot, you still need a reboot, and again, I bet you can relate, because if you've ever gotten a Windows update and you installed it and it told you to reboot and you said, no, 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 not right now, the thing keeps popping up and bugging you every 10 minutes. Well, on the setting tab here, we can enable it and then we can also change how many minutes it's bothering you. All right, let's go to the next setting. The next setting would be delayed restart for schedule installation. And if we take a look at the explanation there, you'll notice it says specifies the amount of time it'll wait before proceeding with a scheduled restart. And this is where that five minute rule came into play. I don't know how big a deal this setting really is. Typically you leave it alone because either you're doing the reboot or you're not doing the reboot. But if you have a situation where you know that these updates are coming in and you have people who might be working at their machines, maybe you're a 24 hour, seven day a week organization. Well, in that instance, you may want to give a user more than five minutes. You may want to actually say, all right, user, you've got 15 minutes to stop what you're doing or 30 minutes to stop what you're doing because what they're doing, they might need more than five minutes to complete their processes to allow the reboot. All right, the next setting is this one is fairly common reschedule automatic updates scheduled installations all right this has to do with how long automatic updates are going to wait following a system startup in other words if the system was off the problem is is that maybe there were a bunch of updates that should have come in overnight when the user turns on their computer they're going to get bothered like crazy about all these automatic updates and you may not want that to happen the minute they walk in the door and turn on their computer. In many organizations, users come in, turn on their computer, and they have 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of routine just to get all their stuff in place and going, open up their email, start different programs, et cetera, et cetera. So you may want to go ahead, and I'll go back to the setting tab, you may want to enable this and tell it to wait, oh, I don't know, let's say 30 minutes. Or maybe you make it wait 60 minutes. That way it's not happening immediately when they first turn on the computer. And that takes us back to enable client-side targeting. Those are pretty much, and actually I enabled this one, so let me turn that one off again. That pretty much is the are, the are the common settings that we would use in group policy with regards to clients who are using a WSUS server. So anyway, let's go ahead and close this, close all the way out of here, and we'll actually uh, go away from our domain controller, come back to our member server. Here we have the WSUS administration tool still open. And the last thing I want to show you here is going to be how to approve updates. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. One would be through automatic approvals. If I click on automatic approvals, and by the way, I'm still highlighted on options down here. If I click on automatic approvals, here you'll see that you can set up a rule regarding certain updates just automatically being approved and not waiting for an administrator to have to come in and manually do so. The default rule and I'll actually click on edit. It says it down here, but let's go up to edit. So you can see 
The properties are when an update is in a specific classification or maybe when an update is on a specific product. In this case, we're picking a specific classification. What is that classification? Critical updates or security updates. Okay, so basically this default rule says, look, if it's critical or if it's security, which very often, by the way, is critical, <laughs> um, then go ahead and just approve it. Don't wait for the administrator. And then there's also the approval for all computers, or you could click on this and pick a specific computer group. And then the name, of course, is the default automatic approval rule. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and create a new rule and everything would work the exact same way. You would set up a specific classification, you would click on classification, you pick which classification or classifications you want, which computers, you can select which computer groups you want, and then you give it a name. Not a whole lot to it. So if you want these updates to automatically be approved, you check the box for the rule that you want to use and then click OK. Now I want to uncheck the box and hit cancel because we're not going to do automatic approvals right now. The reason why is because I want to show you that another way that you can do approvals is by clicking on updates up here. When you click on updates, you'll notice it's going to give me an overview in just a minute. Here we go. It's going to show me that I have 1,486 total updates. Oh, and you know what? I'm just noticing that they are installed. I think I may have clicked to go ahead and approve them. Let me let me take a look here. I'm going to go ahead and click on critical updates. And let's go to unapproved any and refresh. Let's see what we have here. Oh, no. You know, we do have a bunch that are not approved. Okay, good. So this is one way that you can approve the updates. You see the list here, and you'll notice it's quite a large list right now, and that's because we just installed this, so it's giving me all the updates. But if you want, you can highlight an update. You can hold the control key and click on multiple updates. You can hold the you can click on one, hold the shift key, and do a bunch of updates in a row. All those rules kick into play, but basically once you have highlighted an update or a list of updates, you right click and then you select approve. And then again, you can approve only for certain computer groups or for all computers. And you can say, boom, approve for install. And you see, there they go. And click OK. And it has successfully approved that update. Now, another way that we can do this, and this is quite honestly one of my favorite ways to do it, just because it's so easy, is to click right up here on the name of your WSUS server, and right here it's going to tell you, hey, you got these 1,300 updates waiting to be approved. Click on that word approved, and it takes you to the location where we just were. It automatically puts in the approval of unapproved and the status of any. So pretty much that simplifies the step that we just previously went through. So that's why I like to use the link. And then if you know that you have tested everything, just go ahead and select any of them. And you can even hit Control A for select all. Right click and approve. Now I'm not going to do this because these 1300 updates are going to take a long time to approve. But you, you get the idea. That's how you would approve the updates to be sent out to your clients. All right, so let's take a look at what we've learned in this video. All right, well, after watching this video, you should now know how to look up the minimum requirements needed and install WSUS on a server. You should also know how to configure the WSUS server options that are necessary, as well as know how to set up and assign computer groups, whether it be server-side targeting, which is very manual, not done very often, or possibly client-side targeting. Client-side targeting, of course, requires some assistance from group policy. And speaking of group policy, you should know how to configure your clients using group policy. We saw that there's a number of different settings that are available to us so as to really customize the user's experience with, when it comes to updates. And we should now know how to approve updates. Now, I will tell you, you may have noticed as we're playing around here, that WSUS does have more to it. 
if you are going to be in a major enterprise environment, I will tell you there is more functionality and we will have more videos coming out which will show these advanced functions within the WSUS Council. Well, I don't know about you, but I sure did have some fun playing with the WSUS server. Tune into the next video and we'll have fun playing with something else.